Coach Haverdale, we got a big one coming up. Well, five big ones coming up, right? Yeah, yeah, Wednesday, five duels. Yep. Five duels. So this looks like this is going to be the norm, uh, you know, 2020, 2021, right? 2021 right around the corner. But this is going to be the norm. Uh, I haven't really heard of many tournaments going off. I've heard of a lot of duels. And uh, Wednesday, you guys are going to have some top 10 teams in Division One are going to be there. Um, you guys in Elyria, and then uh, Dublin Kaufman is coming down from yeah. Columbus. Uh, Nordonia, they've got some re- they've got some really good talent on the team. Uh, Division three, Marion Pleasant, and uh, you know Lake it, Catholic it, and Lake and uh, and uh, I can't forget the alma mater, <laughs> right? Yeah. Your alma mater. Yeah. That is that ever weird? Uh, Russell Lake Catholic. Um, yeah, it is. Um, you know, we haven't wrestled them in a while. We used to go to their Jimmy Cook uh, event. And, and wrestle them in duels and then our schedule changed and and so we haven't wrestled them in a duel in a while but I um those first couple of years that we went back in a Lake Catholic's gym and wrestled them there was it's weird you know we we do a lot together uh, we train a lot together in the off season and Scott Hibner and I are close so um yeah I, I don't I don't particularly like it you know but uh we're in times where you're trying to get good duels and it, it just happened to work out that way. It, you know, so you guys canceled your tournament for the first time. And the oldest holiday tournament in the United States of America, high school, Scholastic, uh, the Brexville Holiday Classic. Uh, how many years straight did you have it? I, this was either 59 or 60. I'm not sure. That a long is time. unreal. That is unreal. Yeah. And to cancel that, you know, obviously these are, the, these are the signs of the times, Todd. I mean, this is just how it goes. You know, Brexville's what you've built there in the last – 10, 15 years, man. How, how, what a year is this, by the way? It's huh, a good question. I think it's, uh, I think it's number twenty at Brexville. Is this so twenty I years? I think so. Yeah, oh, I coached it. Smokes. A, yeah, two years at Lake Catholic, and then I think this is twenty, number twenty at Brexville. Yeah. Wow, man! And you've just built a powerhouse. You know, one of the the best guys in the country is on your team right now, Vic Voinovich. Uh We got Kale's a freshman, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Vic is committed to Coach Smith at Oklahoma State University. You keep turning out the guys, though, man. I mean, last year, Hatcher's at Cornell now, right now, correct? Correct, yep. Or did he defer or did he go? He went uh, finger legs. So, yeah, he, went he finger legs, finger. okay. Yep. So, he's not going to lose this year. Like, a lot of – some of those guys are losing this year. Yeah, it's, it's weird, right? So, I think the, they're getting this year back, right? So, there was some talk about whether he should just enroll since he wouldn't lose the year anyways. And, but he had already started the Finger Lakes thing. And then um, some of the guys that were enrolled weren't going to be allowed to compete. And so, he wanted to wrestle at UWW Juniors. And so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a mess. It's a total mess. I think that's an understatement. But I, I don't even know what they're doing with Yanni. I think Yanni gets like an Olympic. Yeah, I think – I don't know either. He's going to get back-to-back Olympic years. And I, at one point they were talking about he can win five national titles. It is wild, man. <laughs> so, so you guys, like I'm saying, though, you're always putting guys into D1, D2s, D3s, uh, NAIAs. You guys – I think you've sent somebody at every level. I, I don't know if you guys have had JUCO guys. Have you had JUCO guys? No, no. No JUCO yet. guys. But you've no. gone to all the other levels, basically. Yeah. That is, that's really impressive, Todd. When you know you look at what you've built in 20 years now, I said 10 or 15 years, it's 20. <laughs> what was the first year that you taught at Brexville? Uh, so I think it was uh, 2000, 2001, right, to make this that's 20. 20 so it's 20, yeah, yeah you're, you're at 20. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Only 15 more to go, Todd. <laughs> oh, God, don't put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously one of your really good friends, Scott Hebner's coming in, another really good friend. Eric Burnett's coming in. Right. You and Eric Burnett are frenemies at some level. You have <laughs> I, I, to be. You, know, I, I, you would think so, but I, I don't. There's never the enemy part. I, I don't know. We have a really cool relationship. We do an awful lot together. Our teams do an awful lot together. Um, and, and every year um, we're hitting heads in big times, whether it be the um, the state dual semis or just competing for a trophy at the state tournament or whatever. But uh, there's never, ever been a moment of, of weirdness between the two of us. You know, tomorrow you guys are trying to win the duel. He's trying to win the duel. Is Voinovich at 52 and Mungaya at 60? Is that, is that what we're potentially seeing? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what their lineup's going to look like exactly. I, I know Victor's at 52, though. I would love – and you, you're not afraid to bump Victor up against him, which you did last year in the state semifinal. 
And yeah. I, I'm like, obviously, I'm not putting pressure on you. I, whatever. I, the duel, you're, gonna, you're trying to win the duel, so I don't – I mean, whatever. I don't care either way. I know that the people want to see that matchup, and I know Victor would probably like to get one, that one back. But, man, Mungaya is huge. He's massive. He's a yeah, big guy. I, I think uh, you hit it on the head. Like, as a coach, you're, you're, you're wearing two hats. Like, we want to put ourselves in the best position to win any duel that we wrestle in, and we also want to see the best individual matchups that we can get. And so, um, unfortunately, sometimes you can't get both. You know, you got to make a decision. Um, so, I, I don't know how it will shake out. Shoot, with COVID, you have no idea what anybody's going to – lineup's going to look like on any given day. Yeah, and is Kale at 145 for you guys, yeah. Kale Vonovich? So, we yeah. could see him and Nate Burnett hit tomorrow. That would be yeah. – but once again – we don't know who's going to show up, right? Like it's, you know, it has been, I know Perrysburg, I'm wearing a Perrysburg shirt right now. Shout out to those I see guys. That. They yeah. brought a team to your guys' gym and they were missing a bunch of guys with COVID protocol and whatever else, right? Yeah, they drove, you can give them credit, right? Trying to get good matches. They drove two hours up to our gym for a single duel and they had three starters out. You know, and so you got to give Scotty a lot of credit instead of saying, hey, look, you know, we're not at full strength or whatever. Um, they still made the, the hike up there and, and you know, um, we banged heads and it was good. And um, that's just the way the year is going to be. Yeah, my nephew, Wyatt Miller, missed. Uh, O'Carver was at Archbold. Illyria was there. St. Paris Graham was there. A couple other top 10 guys in his weight class were there in the Division Three, And he missed some really valuable matches there at 195 pounds where he's going to be. And but you have to, you can't send them there and give everybody else COVID, you know, like he had it. My brother had it. My sister-in-law had it. So, I mean, it's just, a, it's a sign of the times, right? Like you, you can't take that risk, Todd. You know what I mean? Like it's just how it is, yep. right? Uh, 195. I thought we were going to have a really good matchup for you guys at 195. Vanadia is up to 220 now, right? Correct. Yep. So we are not going to get to see the shoemate match, but we could see they could maybe potentially bump. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if I um, – I think they weigh in their, their 95 uh, – Shoemate and their 220 both at 95, and then they, they kind of decide what makes the most sense. And so um, I think it's possible that that matchup still happens. Um, but, you know, we're both in the same boat. If it makes more sense for them to leave Seth at 95 to try to win the duel, then um, that's probably what they're going to do. Um, so, so who knows? I mean, I, I hope from an individual standpoint that matchup happens. Um, but I also know well, we're going to do what we got to do to try to win the duel, and I'm sure that they're going to do the same thing. Up and down the lineup, man. I look at you guys, obviously, two Voinovich's, Vanadia. Vanadia's going to Purdue, right? Yeah, yep. And then Jet, is Jet your 20-pounder? Uh, yeah, yeah, sophomore. Tough kid, man. He knocked off Jacob Moon in that duel with Perrysburg. So, you know, that's when I see stuff like that, that really catches my eye. But aside from these super matchups we talk about, right, obviously we, everybody wants to see Mungaya take on uh, Vic Voinovich, right? I mean – you want that. I want that. But it, it, it's, you want to beat Illyria. Illyria wants to beat you. Yeah. And that's what we're, we're here for. Uh, when you go against Lake Catholic, you know, they yep. got six or seven really good guys, top 10, top 15 type guys in division two. What's the strategy there besides win the duel? Like, do you bump in any of those situations there? You know, it's, it's interesting because, um, but bumping has to fit your personnel, if that makes sense. You know, sometimes you get yourself into a situation where um, how do you bump? You're bumping out. Uh, you know, for example, you talk about Victor. Uh, our, uh, we have a, a state qualifier at 60. Um, and so if you, if you bump, you bump the state qualifier out of the lineup. We have a sophomore at, at 70, um, who, the younger Vanadia, who's tough. And so do you bump him out? Um, our state qualifier at 60 goes back and forth and wrestle offs with another senior. And, and you know what I mean? So like, where, where does it end? Who do you bump out? How do you explain that to somebody is, you know, you want those guys to have those matches too. And so, um, our lineups at a point where, um, bumping's difficult, you know, sometimes you get a point, you know, you get, you get a spot where like you got a stud and the weight class above is maybe, maybe that guy's out. Maybe he's out with COVID. I don't know. Right. Maybe he's sick. Or maybe you just have a spot where um, you just got a young kid in the lineup that's not ready for that big time match yet. And so bumping makes a ton of sense. Um, where our lineup's at right now, um, probably not doing much bumping. It, however, the matches fall, they fall. So I look at uh, Pleasant and I look at uh, Nordonia. Both got really, two really good individuals. I think yeah. at 52, Pleasant might have the number one guy at, at 152. I mean, yeah. what a better measuring stick for that guy to go up and knock heads with Vic Voinovich. Sure. Right? I mean, you love to see that. And I, I, that's the big thing I love about 
whenever division three teams like that, because I know Carver does that a lot, you know, they're division three now they go and they, they match up against Graham. They match up against Delirium. Yeah. Maybe they get the tar kicked out of them, but the guys are, it's valuable experience. So those are some other good ones. A Perrine at 182 for Nordonia. He's obviously really tough. So those yeah. are some other ones that, you know, looking at the up and down the lineup, uh, obviously to go five and zero tomorrow. Or, sorry, two days, two days from now. To go 5-0, and oh, what would it mean for you guys to, to knock off Elyria, Kaufman, Lake Catholic, you know, Pleasant, and Nordonia? What would it mean for you guys to, to, to start out, to end 2020 on a real positive note for you guys? You know, honestly, Zab, I, I don't know that we've even thought about going 5-0. and oh. we, haven't, uh, we haven't talked about specific duels, anything like that. I mean, I think for us, it's uh, an opportunity to get out and compete again. Um, we took a, a loss to Wadsworth last week in, a, in a, just a, probably the craziest end to a duel that I've ever seen. Um, I thought our kids competed hard, but we came up on the short end. And so for us, it's just an opportunity um, to compete again. Um, really haven't thought much about going 5-0 and or 0-5 or whatever. Um, we got some guys that need some, some wins and they need to um, – um, you know, step up and wrestle big matches. You, you talked about 82. I think, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I th think all five guys at 82 are ranked in like the top 11 or something like that. Yeah, they're pretty good. Teams. 182 is yeah, going to be got, bananas tomorrow. Yeah, Jake Evans and Hibner and um, Brett Broski at, at Kaufman and um, the, the Pleasant kid, I think, is ranked right around 10, something like that. And then Perrine is like three or four. So, um, you know, uh, that, 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 that's awesome. And so I think we've thought more about that kind of stuff. The, um, the potential individual matchups that we can get as terms of measuring sticks. We haven't really talked much about like, well, what's it going to take to beat O'Leary in a duel or what's it going to take to beat Kaufman in a duel? Um, you know, I, for when, when we canceled our tournament, unfortunately, uh, the first thing I did was call Eric and say, Hey, we're both available on this day. Let's, you know, we, we had a duel scheduled earlier and it got canceled. And, and we grabbed Scotty and said, so like O'Leary couldn't come, Perrysburg could. And so um, we grabbed him, uh, Eric and I got on the phone and said, let's make this happen. We're both super close with Hibner and said, let's drag him in. Let's, you know, um, who else in our tournament's going to be available on that day? Hey, Kaufman, they're freaking good, man. And so let's get Kaufman lost, in. They lost a 39-36 duel to St. Ed's. Yeah. Kaufman's yeah. The really deal. good. They got the Ayubes, Ayubes, right? They're really good. Yeah. Like you said, uh, yeah. 82 is really good. I mean, up and down the lineup, they're really good. And they're, they are, they're, they're a, they're a problem. They could, yeah. they could walk away with you know, the way the districts line up, Todd, they could walk away and challenge for the state tournament this year. If we have one. Yeah, they're, they're, um, I think, you know, people talk a lot about Eds as they should, but Wadsworth and, and Illyria and whatever people, uh, I don't know if they understand how good Kaufman is. They know now, right? Um, and so then, and then you got to give, you know, Pleasant being a D3 school who's willing to wrestle with the, the Illyrias and the Kaufmans and the Lake Catholics of the world. And, and then Nerdonia, who's, um, like I said, they have some really good individuals and they're, they're trying to rebuild their program. You got to give those guys credit for stepping to the plate against some of the big boys. Um, and so again, I, I don't know that we've really focused on, uh, the team part of it as much as it's just been, um, individual stuff. Carter Chase is the number two ranked guy for Marion Pleasant at 152. Yep. So Carter Chase is going to get a really good test in the next couple days here. And, yep. you know, and I, I, I'd like to see them bump him up or do something against Mungai. I, I just, huh. yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited for the Burnett Boinovich matchup. There's just so many of them, man, that, that. Yeah, really good wrestling. Going to be in Illyria's gym coming up here, Todd. I, I'm excited for it. Hey, how's the dad life? How's the dad life treating you right now? <laughs> it's good, man. It's uh, it's awesome. You know, um, I think we might have talked about this before. My kids are gymnasts, and so I know nothing about gymnastics, which is really cool. Um, so I, I just uh, go and sit there, and if they don't fall off the beam, then I, I think they did great. Um, so uh, it, it, it's it's uh, it's good. Uh, I, a little bit sad that like my oldest is in high school now. And so all this training to be, and it's time for her to compete in high school. And then the season looks all kind of weird. And so I kind of bummed out. She doesn't get the, the real um, maybe experience, but I am grateful that they're able to do some competition. So dad life is good. Awesome, man. Have you found any hobbies since we talked <laughs> on the zoom last? Uh, no, no, not really. Still, still a lot of wrestling. I love these, um, uh, these these college cards that they're they're doing now, man, it's been really cool. I think 
you know, uh, if you find the silver lining, like this pandemic um, ha has, we, we just had this RTC cup, right? That was awesome. Why haven't we been doing that before? You know, it's like we took, it took a pandemic for us to figure some of this stuff out. But um, for me, the wrestling geek, it's, there's been a lot more wrestling on, on uh, Rockfin and Flow and whatever. And it's, uh, it's, it's been good. Did you, did you check the uh, Pittsburgh Wrestling Club one out? You know, they went off the same time. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. what happened was they were going to be the undercard for Penn State for Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, and the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club just does whatever they want. So they made their own undercard, which okay. I don't blame them. They want their guys to wrestle. So, I mean, whatever. You really can't fault Sanderson. He does what he wants. He's a honey badger. But it didn't really – you know, obviously it didn't help the Pittsburgh Wrestling Club. But I called those Pittsburgh Wrestling Club ones with Nico Megalutis. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Every match was a war. Really? That's awesome. Every match was a war. The only match that wasn't a really good match was Pletcher versus Habit. And Pletcher, he really took it to Dave Habit. And you never could have told me that. Yeah. A week ago, man. Yeah, it's funny. That's the, actually the only match I ended up watching on that card. I watched the Penn State one. But, you know, just knowing David growing up, and he, he wrestled freestyle in our room. And so I still follow him quite a bit. Um, so that was the one I did go back and watch. And, man, Pletcher looked good. He looked really good. How about he just picked him up and horsed him to start them? I couldn't believe that. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, any matchups that you uh, – that are dear to your heart or you really want to see when it, when it comes to – whether it's Lake Catholic, Illyria, Kaufman, Pleasant, Nordonia, is there anything that jumps out at you, Todd, that you really want to see or something you've like, really been looking forward to? No, I mean, you know, I guess as a head coach, you're worried about 14 different kids and they all have five different matches. And, um, you know, so, so I, you know, I don't know that I get too caught up in that. I mean, I, but I'm a fan, you know, so I, I, I want to watch Hibner and Jake Evans. I want to watch Sal Prine and, and Evans and Hibner. And, you know, so I think I, I think about those matches sometimes more as a fan. Um, but in terms of our kids, I mean, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is um, get, get them as many big matches as possible. And so I think Wednesday there's going to be some big ones. And then we turn around and we're going to Graham. And we're going to wrestle St. Paris Graham. And then we're going to wrestle LaSalle. And then we're going to wrestle Maslin Perry. And so those matchups, um, you know, they, they just keep coming. And so I don't think that we over-focus on any, any one specific individual match. Who, who was all at Graham? Did you just, was it Maslin Perry and LaSalle at, at Graham? No, no, no. No, it's just we're, we're actually going to get in the car and drive three hours to wrestle them in a duel and turn around and drive home. When, when is that? Uh, that Friday afterwards, whatever it is, January, what would that be? I don't know. The, the eighth, the seventh? Something, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah and then I think they wrestle, they wrestle Ed's the next day, I think. So oh, we'll okay. wrestle Graham Friday night, and I think they wrestle Ed's on Saturday. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The Falcons aren't playing. They're good, man. They're, They're really, really good, good, actually. Yeah. They're really good. Uh, they got two, I think, two freshmen, a six and an 82 who could win the state, you know. So, yeah. Nevs and it's a, it's a Jordan, but not a related Jordan. Jordan. Right. It's, yeah, but it's not, a, it's not a related Jordan. I think he's from Arizona. Arizona, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, they got a really good team, and they, they put it on everybody this year. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right. You got anything else for me? I got dinner. I got kids. I've been cutting no. trees down and doing the job today. I'll shoot you a video. You can watch me dropping a tree today. My wife's spotting me, uh, saving my life, actually. <laughs> uh, you going to be there Wednesday? I, I'm not shooting this preview to not be there on Wednesday. All right. All right. Okay. okay? So, yeah. What's your role Wednesday? What are you doing? Are you filming or interviewing? Well, or what are you doing? Neiman, Neiman's coming with Sean Penn, Inside the Circle guys from Columbus. And their yeah. main focus was Kaufman and – Pleasant, Pleasant. Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to draw them in to get all three duels called. And what I'll do is I'll go. I can be the guy who calls. I'm doing live, like you're like okay. So name a big matchup, right? Like obviously the duel with Illyria and Brexel is live on my YouTube. This is all going to be on GoHiocast. Okay. I'm going to share with them, and it'll be on Inside the Circle as well. So that'll be live. Uh, it depends when Kaufman hits. Elyria and when Kaufman hits Brexville, because I'm trying to make those ones live as well, because what's there's four really good teams. And then obviously Pleasant's competitive in division three. They're pretty good. Uh, dual wise. I don't know if, how crazy their duels are going to be with you guys. And then uh, Nordonia obviously has some good individuals, but those four teams, whenever they're wrestling each other, yeah, I have to pick and make a decision. Who's going to be live. Who's going to be the live stream. 
but all the matches are being filmed and put on GoHioCast and uploaded. Okay, sweet. Does that make sense? Yep. So you'll be able to go back and watch Evans Hibner. Yeah. On GoHio. Um, they might be long ones where you got to scrub ahead or scrub back, but yeah, if you're inconvenienced fine. by that, uh, you're a spoiled jerk, and I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you're watching it for free. Hey, if you subscribe, make sure you subscribe. People got to hit the subscribe button. Um, we're growing, and you know it's a business like anything. You got to grow it, and the YouTube channel continues to grow. And I got to help inside the circle. You know, grow. They do a really good job. Yeah. Mark and Sean, they do previews. Mark Neiman's got. He's got nuclear power plant uh, energy, if you've ever talked to him. Yeah, he sure does. Yeah. Really good guy, and Sean's yeah. a good dude, too. So, yeah, they're coming in, and I'm trying to share. and Because I want them. They're going to call all the Kaufman matches and the Pleasant matches. So, I'll awesome. send a camera and put it next to them, and then we'll share vice versa. But, yeah, we're going to get every match. I will have every match, and then I'll share with them or whatever they want, okay? Yeah, well, if you need anything on Wednesday, let me know. Live. It's live. Your two, at least two of your duels are going to be live. I can tell you that right now. So right, obviously good. your Kaufman duel and your Illyria duel will be live on GoHioCast. Free. They can watch it. Subscribe to it. That's all those people got to know. I can't do all five of yours live, though. All right. Fair enough. We'll your Pleasant one's not going to be live, and your uh, Nordonia one's not going to be live. Okay. I have to make a decision. It depends what the other matchups are to see if your late Catholic one will be live. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think the Chidlaw put out the schedule, so I, I can send it to you if you want. So you can yeah, shoot me the schedule and we'll get that going. And at, at that point, I'll be able to tell you what's going to be live each round because there's going to be five live duels. Yep. Yeah. Make sense? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Coach Haverdell, you're the man. Go find some hobbies. Go run out in the Rexford Reservation or down in the Cuyahoga Valley and have some <laughs> fun. I'll see you Wednesday and thanks for the time. All right. All right, Zeb. We'll see you, buddy. All right, buddy. Later. Bye.